Narcissists are all about playing games, mind games. If their lips are moving, they're trying to run some kind of mind game on you. People who are highly narcissistic play these games to maintain control. Maintaining control in the relationship is done by getting reactions out of you as well as being able to manipulate you however they see fit. Some of these mind games are far more sinister than others and some look nothing like games at all so you don't even know you're playing. I'll share in this video what these games are and how you actually win against a narcissist. Hi there and welcome back. My name is Jess. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about narcissistic abuse, start now by subscribing. I invite you to come and ask your questions about narcissistic relationships on my weekly live stream that I host every Saturday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you'd like to talk privately with me, you can send an email to bookachatwithjess at gmail.com to get information, rates, and set up an appointment with me. To support what I do here on YouTube, you can become a channel member. Becoming a member is a monthly form of support, and if you're awesome enough to do so, you get exclusive content only offered to channel members. You can click join just below the video to do that, or if you don't see that, fear not, there is a link down in the description as well as more information there for you. More videos and all that stuff. So mind game number one, benefit me. Narcissists will forever use your weaknesses against you. They'll also use your flaws, insecurities, things that make you jealous, and things that keep you weak, low, and feeling bad about yourself right against you. Some narcissists will even prod you to talk about things that bother you, things that make you upset or insecure, because they're going to hold on to this information. It's incredibly valuable to them. They need to know these things. And what you tell them about yourself will be used against you to hurt you. If they know you are unhappy with your weight, for example, they'll tell you that you're too overweight, you're too underweight, something, whatever's just going to poke at that little insecurity. Those are little jabs to lower your self-esteem lower and lower and lower. And this ultimately benefits them. So even if you think you aren't benefiting a narcissist, you are. Just because they're not getting their bills paid by you or you're not buying them cars or clothes or taking them places, you're still benefiting them in this way by keeping you feeling shitty about yourself. Again, it diminishes your self-esteem. And when you have none of that, you are far less likely to leave and much more likely to do whatever it is they tell you to do. Mind game number two, fear me. Scare tactics are a big part of the narcissist's arsenal of mind game fuckery. You better listen to them and do what they say or else. Lots of people who have been abused by a narcissist talk about the feeling of having to walk on eggshells. You're afraid to do or say certain things. Narcissists cause us to make irrational, fear-based decisions. They might threaten you or act out physically violent, do things like that. Discarding you, they might end the relationship. You might be punished, quote unquote, with a silent treatment. Get some narcissistic rage, some yelling, some screaming. All those things might be threatened or actually even done if you don't do what they say. This is common and easy to understand here. If you're afraid of them or afraid they're, you know, that they'll leave or whatever, again, you're more likely to do what it is they want you to do. And this, again, is done to maintain control, which I talked about in my intro. Narcissists need control over everything. They love to feel powerful, in control, and in charge, along with getting you to react and do things they want. This is also an ego boost and proof to them they own you, they own your emotions. You will, you know, say how high when they demand you jump and you are just completely owned. Later on in this video, though, don't don't get you know discouraged. I'll tell you how to take your power back. But let's go over some more of these mind games. And then at the end, I'll tell you how to fuck them over and get your power. <laughs> mind game number three, just you and me. This is all about isolation. Narcissists and toxic people alike need to keep you very, very isolated from everybody else in your life. And they're going to try to do this in any way they can. This is achieved by things like a smear campaign, which is gossip and rumors and bullshit about you behind your back. They'll talk shit to your friends, your family, your kids, your co-workers, anybody else they can to get people to think you're crazy, mean, delusional, you're toxic, you're the problem, you lie, you cheat, etc. Narcissists will tell people that you don't like them 
or they'll say that you talk shit about people. And it's, again, all done to repel people, make people not like you, and keep people away from you. On the flip side, but then again, along the same lines, it's also common for narcissists to tell you that other people are talking shit about you, that they don't like you, that they're fake, etc. They're going to use both sides to really drive a wedge between people. Narcissists can often tell you things like your family, friends, or kids don't even like you. And, you know, or that the friends and kids and family, whatever, that they don't like the narcissist. They don't like the partner that you've chosen. So now you get that super fun choice of choosing between your family, friends, kids, coworkers, whatever. And now this person you're in a relationship with. Super fun. Again, they're going to take credit for things that you do by letting others know that, you know, yeah, you know, you have some kind of accolade, award or achievement, but you just couldn't have done it without them. So that the person, again, doesn't think that you're all that awesome because you needed somebody else's help to achieve it. And all of this pushes people away from you, makes people stay away, avoid you. So now it's just you and the narcissist. And you'll start believing they're the only one who cares about you. And that gets into gaslighting and far more sinister stuff. I won't get into that here, but that's what happens there. Mind game number four, obey me. Narcissists have a need to always be right and always win. What the hell that means in their brain, I don't know, but that's what they want to do. They want to be right, quote unquote, and they want to win. It gives them an ego boost, which they need every fucking five seconds to allow them, you know, to feel superior over you. Remember, survivor, the narcissist always needs to feel superior, better than you, smarter, stronger, faster, all of that. And they will never miss an opportunity ever to remind you that they're fucking better than you. Sometimes this is subtle, sometimes it's not. But the obey me mind game is played by constantly critiquing you, picking you apart, teasing you, insulting you, saying things like, you know, well, you don't know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. You need me. You don't know shit. Oh, why did you even bother doing that? Step aside, dumbass. Let me do it. You know, the all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful narcissist. You're useless. You suck. And therefore, I need to keep correcting you, putting you in your place. Eventually, you'll understand. Things like that. They make all the rules that you have to follow. What this does is convince you over time they are always right. You stop arguing your point. There isn't, you know, any reason to do so. The threats happen. Obviously, if you don't obey, there's going to be consequences for your behavior. That all comes down to they need somebody to obey them constantly, all the time. More power struggles, all kinds of stuff like that. Mind game number five, poor me. I've said it a million times. If I said it once, I found this quote on Instagram a while ago and it said, quote, a narcissist wants to be either the hero or the victim, never the bad guy, end quote. And it stuck with me all this time. And since most of them, frankly, make pretty shitty fucking heroes, um, you know, the worst heroes I've ever experienced anyway, it's a lot easier for them to be the victim, And here we are with poor me. This is a game I think all narcissists play to some degree, covert, overt, whatever. However, I do think the covert plays this more and frankly better (laughs) than the overt. Everything is somebody else's fault. And typically that somebody else is you. There's always somebody else at fault, somebody else to blame for everything that has been done. There's no accountability with a narcissist. Don't expect it. Don't want it. They're never going to take responsibility for anything. The victim mentality does a few things here. Firstly, they're going to get more sympathy and support when they always have a sob story and they're a victim of circumstance. It works well with you as well as other forms of supply, other supply they might be trying to get and reaching out to. Secondly, this teaches you that this is always your fault. Everything is your fault. And through the powers of things like gaslighting, isolation, devaluing, and so on, you actually can start to believe over time everything is your fault. So what what the hell does that really matter, right? Who the hell cares? Okay, everything's your fault. What does that do for the narcissist? Well, When you're told everything is your fault, you're probably going to do or have done exactly what I did when I got shit on and told everything was my fault. You start overcompensating. You're trying harder. You're doing more. You're making yourself more available. You're walking on eggshells. You're fighting less, losing your voice, your power, not talking about your emotions, thoughts, feelings, opinions. You're complaining less. You've become more and more of a doormat every single day. And a lot of narcissists use the poor me game and love bombing. You know, there's... 
a lot of them have a terrible, sad, you know, sob story about how all of their exes just didn't understand them. They were terrible, you know, to them and all that. You know, the narcissist I was with told me that he caught his last ex in bed with his best friend. Gonna go on ahead and highly doubt this. To be fair, I didn't really believe it when the story was told to me. It just sounded way too crazy and ridiculous. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. It was probably the other way around if we're honest with each other. But you get my point. Pity is a huge deal when you're with somebody toxic. They always, you know want pity for for something. Sometimes it doesn't even really matter what it is, or it's something that doesn't even make any sense. Mind game number six, trust me, the trust game. This is played more often by covert narcissists. Overts don't really want to hear a whole lot from you, and it's glaringly all about them. An overt usually wants you to be quiet, not open up, not have any issues. It's like, you know, <laughs> relax, bitch, you're better seen, not heard. And so, you know, not that, you know, overts can't, but this mind game is more for the cerebral, covert, you know, calculated narcissist. They lure you into that false sense of security and encourage you to open up and spill your guts to them. They ask questions about you a lot of questions about you. Pry even might ask you some borderline uncomfortable questions, but under that guise of just wanting to know all about you. In the love bombing phase, we're not even aware for the most part we're playing this game. Much like myself, I thought I just finally met a dude who actually gave a shit about me and wanted to learn about me and so on. And instead of thinking I was getting played, here I was sitting thinking how refreshing it was to meet somebody like this. So that's the kind of a thing that happens. It's human to find comfort in being able to share your deepest and darkest with somebody, and hopefully they'll still love you. They won't pass judgment or think less of you. And it's something so hard to find. So when we do, or we think we do, like in these cases, I think it makes us cling that much harder. Little did I know, spilling so many secrets and so fast, letting loose the skeletons in my closet, which we all have, little did I know that this would cause just destruction, mental torture, anguish, and emotional agony, a lot of which I've never even talked about in the almost two years I've been doing this channel. Everything you spill is collected like data. The narcissist holds on to it and, you know, lets it, you know, just kind of sit in their brain, but then they let it loose randomly, unknowingly, in forms of criticisms, critiques, nasty comments, and so on, sinisterly holding things against you, making you feel bad about things, guilting you into doing things that you don't want to do, things you might be super fucking uncomfortable with, reminding you constantly of your failures, and so on. Well, this this got depressing. <laughs> Let's move swiftly on, Survivor, to, okay, mind games are being played. No shit, narcissists, I'll do it, every single one of them. So what do I do about it now that I realize this is happening to me? You know what I mean? Well, you need to be a doormat, right? You need to be manageable, maneuverable, easy for a narcissist to manipulate. This is all all about control. So let's talk about the most important thing in this whole video, how you take power and control back right here. First and most importantly, if you take nothing else away from this video, I do not care, but know this, understand there is no winning, quote unquote, with a narcissist. Understand that survivor right now. If your goal is to win at whatever, it is not going to happen. What you want to do instead is diffuse the situation, shut them down, stop them from happening. That is how you ultimately, quote unquote, win. Okay. So I'll know when I get all my comments in the comment section that tell me not to fight and win and blah, blah, blah. I'll know how many people didn't actually make it this far into the video. When I actually tell you there is no way to win, you're just going to shut their shit down. So haha, ha, save your comments. I know not to, you know, fight with them. Ha ha. <laughs> so next most important, never give them a reaction. They want you to be afraid. They want you to be angry. They want you to be defensive. Stop getting angry at least in front of them, okay? This is not about suppressing your emotions and not having them and being a robot. This is about not giving them the reaction. Stop reacting to the bullshit, again, in front of them. Have your emotions in private, away from them. This is where you have to learn how to gray rock, which I had videos on. I will link them at the end of this video and down in the description for you as well. Gray rock is a wonderful technique to learn to take power away from a narcissist. You're essentially going to starve them and cut off their supply. So it's a whole process. It's a whole thing you have to learn. It does take some time, so don't get too discouraged, but we can do that. So 
Also, be bold. Frankly, call these douchebags out on their behavior. Say things like, you're going to stop changing the subject. We're talking about ABC XYZ right now. Or no, you're actually not going to turn this around on me. That doesn't work. We can talk about me, but we're going to do that after we finish talking about what you're doing. Just be bold. Say, hey, listen, I know you're playing games. So no, we're not going to do this. We're talking about this or we're talking about you or whatever the case may be. We're not doing this right now. We're doing this. So you're not going to sneak out of this or refuse to take accountability. Let them know that you see what they're doing. No. And then another thing that you might want to let them know, I encourage it, let them know they have not, in fact, broken you. Stay positive. Don't engage in bullshit. Be cheery and warm and show them that even if you got to fake it till you make it, which a lot of us do, they don't get under your skin and they don't affect you. So don't get into fights that go nowhere. Please, survivor, again, if nothing else, stop trying to defend yourself. I know that sounds ridiculous. Don't defend yourself. I know. But it's what needs to be done because the narcissist doesn't give a shit what your defense is. They just want to fight. They want to see you scream and cry and yell and throw things. They want drama. They want to see you break down. They want to see you scramble and give them further proof they own you and your emotions. And they do not. Don't engage in fights that go nowhere, circular conversations, patterns that lead to absolutely nothing. Narcissists are not interested in finding solutions to problems. They are the problem and they're not looking for a solution. So you can let them know when the fight, you know, when the fight starts that you're not engaging. You say, I'm not doing this. Or you can say whatever the hell you have to say and then you can go, that's it. I don't have anything else to say on this matter. Walk away, hang up the phone or do whatever it is that you do. You know, let them know you're not engaging. I'm not having this fight with you that goes nowhere. I have shit to do. And then if you want to disagree, say what your disagreement is. And then again, I have nothing more to say. I'm done here. So end things. Diffuse. Don't defend yourself. Let it go. Let it roll off your shoulder. Walk away. Cool, calm, collected, gray rock. And then in the end, please decide that the relationship is dead in the water, move on and go no contact. That's what has to be done. Every single narcissist plays mind games. They're sinister and evil and it's all about manipulation and how to get control over you. But that's how you win. Diffusing the situation, walking away, gray rocking and deciding I'm not dealing with you anymore. You're cutting off what they need. You're starving them from that supply. They won't know what to do. They'll scramble and eventually they'll move on. But trust me, so will you. I promise you'll move on and you'll actually be able to move on and have a better life. They're going to keep doing this shit over and over and over. But that's how you win, Survivor. So let's chat about other mind games because I didn't list them all here. Let's talk about mind games down in the comments. And so what other ones do they play? Let me know. Please like the video. It's quick, painless, and really helps me out. Share the video on other social media uh, uh, platforms if you feel it might, you know, help somebody else. You can also subscribe if you haven't and turn on notifications for more videos on narcissistic abuse and recovery every single week. Have a great day, Survivor and take care of yourself.